debate, talk a little further about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chairman. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just want to take a call as uh, Minister who um, appeared in front of the Select Committee on two, in two areas, first of all MSD and then um, uh, MVCOT, Ministry for Vulnerable Children, Oranga Tamariki. Uh, just in response to the member who's res re resumed her seat, can I say that um, that reduction in community services funding uh, is a result of the one-off funding that was part of the community investment uh, pr uh, program that ran over three or four years, actually, and was the last of that um, uh, money that was provided to build capability, to, build, uh, to help uh, community services uh, build the infrastructure that was needed in order to uh, move to results-based funding. So it was one-off funding, uh, and uh, it was always um, um, promised for one year, and of course um, it, it disappeared at the end of that year. Uh, I just want to touch on one particular thing for MSD in the budget, and that was the $19.5 million over the next three years uh, in, uh, to expand that intensive support for up to 1,500 young New Zealanders. Now, these are a particular target group uh, that we've been quite worried about. They're, they're now aged 25 to 29, but they entered the benefit system under the age of 20, and they entered the benefit system uh, at, at the time of the global financial crisis. And this is not peculiar to just New Zealand. This is talking with uh, others around the, the world, dealing with a similar age group who, uh, had the crisis, financial crisis not happened, would probably have left their training and gone into work uh, and, and sustained that employment. For some reason, seem to be um, uh, tr uh, trawling through the benefit system, actually finding work but not sustaining it and returning to the benefit system. And so this 19.5 million is particularly targeted at that, that group of, of young New Zealanders that we want to assist. Um, well, first of all, we'd like to find out what is, what is, the, what is the barrier to them uh, re being retained in employment, uh, but secondly, then put in place um, any steps that we can to help them maintain that employment. So a particular group, and I think it's um, going to be money well spent uh, for, that, for that section of New Zealanders. Of course, um, a, a large part of the time with the Select Committee and the estimates was around uh, the considerable, the second year of considerable funding into the new Ministry for Vulnerable Children, Oranga Tamariki. And there was a number of streams of of work. First of all, uh, an increase in just based funding uh, to maintain the existing services, because it's very important when you are reforming a service uh, and expanding their, their reach that you maintain those essential services at the core, which are about um, 5,500 uh, 5 young people who are in the care of the state. So, but in addition to that, uh, we increased the age in the legislation last year. So $71 million went straight into the budget in order to maintain those young people within the, the state sector, uh, state services, for another year. Um, $11.7 million over the next two years to tri trial and evaluate community-based remand centres for young offenders. Now, we've, there's been quite some publicity uh, in recent uh, months about young people being in police cells, and none of us want that. That's not a great place for a young person to be. Sometimes it's the safest place for them to be at a particular time. Uh, but despite the fact that we, um, we have youth residences uh, of, 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 a, of a very high standard uh, and providing good services around those young offenders, um, we, we know that the best way to deal with uh, some of those young people while they're on remand, so before they actually go into the youth court, is keeping them in their communities, is keeping them there where they have all the supports from their whanau, from the wider um, uh, iwi, and in many cases uh, from their schools and that, and that wider community support. And so um, that's not an easy thing to put into place, and so we uh, managed to uh, convince the Minister of Finance that this was something that needed to be trialled and evaluated to see whether, in fact, we get better outcomes for those young people 
by retaining them in their communities and wrapping that intensive care around them from the time they come to our attention. So even before they go into court, making sure that we're getting some support uh, into them, identifying education issues, very, money very well spent. Oh, Peter William Seale. Mr Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm not a member of...